I've taken a look at several Linux distributions on this channel over the past year plus that I've been doing this, and yet there is still one very popular distro that I haven't touched on yet, Fedora. But that all changes today as I'm going to kick the tires on it and poke around Red Hat's playground for future releases of their enterprise Linux distribution. I mean, heck, even Linus Torvalds himself uses Fedora on his personal machines. So it has to be the Linux distro, right? Let's find out. You smell that? It smells like a bit goblin. In simple terms, Fedora is an operating system provided to the community free of charge by the Fedora Project, who is primarily sponsored by Red Hat. Its primary focus is on its desktop distribution, but it also has traditional server and IoT-focused distributions as well. It is well known for its releases being on the bleeding edge in terms of software versions shipped with each release, though this bleeding edginess doesn't really affect the reliability of Fedora since it's still a rock-solid and reliable OS for whatever you need. It's really just that the software versions change more frequently than other distros, and some people may prefer having a stable base for a period of time. If you really want to get into the nitty-gritty details, Red Hat used Fedora as a testing ground of sorts where they can test out things like new software versions, new tooling, and good old updates before they run through the proper channels and get pushed through to future RHEL releases. It's a neat little system in my opinion. You give the community a free OS that's rock solid for the average everyday user, and in turn, you get some extra testing and feedback for future RHEL releases. It's a win-win. Moving on to actually using Fedora, let's start with the installation process. Setting up the bootable USB drive is actually pretty easy. Just go to the getfedora.org website and click download now in the Fedora workstation section. Assuming you're on a Windows or Mac OS, click the download button for the Fedora Media Writer application. You can download the ISO image and write it using another application like DD or Rufus, like normal, if you want to go that way. But today we're just going to go the easier route. With the Media Writer application downloaded, launch it, and then click through next a few times to finish the installation. When it's done, you can launch the app, and you should make sure your flash drive is plugged in. I got a notification about the drive already being used for something else. That's fine, just click to re free format the drive, just make sure you don't have anything important on it. Now that the drive is ready, let's click on Fedora Workstation, and on this screen, we'll check the Immediately Create Bootable Drive After Download Finishes box. This may take a while depending on your internet connection, so I'll check back when it's done. Now that that's done, we can close the window and reboot our system to boot into the flash drive. Eventually, you'll be presented with a GNOME desktop with a window asking if you want to try Fedora Live or install it. So let's click the install button. The first screen on the installer is asking you for your system language and keyboard layout. So when you have that set, click next and you'll have a screen with three things here. The only thing we need to do right now is review the storage destination for the installer, so let's click that button. If you're looking to customize the installation layout, you just need to select all the drives you want to use above. You'll see a few lined up up here if you have more than one. And then check the custom partition layout option. But most of you shouldn't need to do that, and you can just leave the automatic setting checked and then click done without changing anything else. Now just click continue in the bottom right and the system will start the installation. Once it's done, click Finish Installation on the bottom right of the window, and then you'll need to restart your system and remove the installation media so you can boot into your brand new Fedora installation. Once you're back up and running, you'll get a new window for configuring your system. Click Start. If you have Wi-Fi, you'll be prompted to configure it, and then you'll be asked if you'll want location services and automatic problem reporting. Choose either of these as you prefer. I'm going to disable location services and leave automatic problem reporting enabled. The next screen asks if you want to enable third-party repositories, which gives us access to things like closed source drivers and software. I'm going to select no for now and show you how to enable these more granularly later. On this next screen, you can sign in to online service integrations, which I'm going to skip for now. And finally, we get to create our user. Fill out your display name and username, and then set your password. After that, the install is completed and we can click this button to start using our new OS. Just be sure to give it a sec to log in as your new user and your screen may flicker in the process. At this point, you should be at a GNOME desktop and honestly, there really isn't too much to say about Fedora here. It's literally a stock GNOME installation. You're not gonna find any special extensions like Ubuntu's or Pop OS's docs or any special tools like Linux Mint has. But being box standard isn't necessarily a bad thing and the base desktop is just simply beautiful. 
GNOME 3 really has come a long way since its early buggy and bloated inception several years ago. The default theme looks great with both light and dark theme options available. Multitasking is really slick with a few different ways to manage it based on your preferences. And the desktop does its best to just get out of your way and keep you focused on the task at hand. Plus, Fedora has made it a lot easier to install closed source software, which we'll touch on in a moment. Before we start poking around the desktop, let's take a look at some of the included package versions for some major software. The Linux kernel is on version 5.16.9, the NVIDIA driver is on version 5.10.54, the AMD GPU driver is 21.0.0, GNOME is on version 41, KDE Plasma Desktop is on 5.23.5, Firefox is on version 97.0, LibreOffice is on version 7.2.5.2, and VLC uses version 3.0.16. Since I mentioned a dark theme earlier, and everyone seems to love that these days, let's take a look at that really quick. Unfortunately, GNOME doesn't have a theme setting to find in their main settings menu, so we need to install the GNOME Tweaks application. To do that, let's open up the software app and then search for Tweaks. We want the first result, so let's click Install, and it should be done shortly. Now that it's installed, let's open up the Tweaks application. This is kind of like the GNOME settings menu part 2, giving us more advanced control over our desktop. What we want to do here to enable the dark theme is go to the appearance tab, and then for application theme we just need to select Adwaita Dark. Boom! Look at that! Everything has a dark theme. If you want now you can explore some of the other settings here. I personally like to change the date format in the top bar, and then I also like to enable the maximize and minimize window controls. One thing I like to do on all my GNOME desktops is to install a dock extension if it's not already provided by my OS. To do that, open up a browser and go to extensions.gnome.org. At the top of the page, we get a notification that we need an extension and a native GNOME integration plugin. Thankfully, the native integration should already be enabled and we just need to click this link to install the Firefox extension. Just click through the menus to allow installing the extension and then refresh the page once you're done. Now let's search for the dash to dock extension. The first result is the one we want by Michelle underscore G. Click on it and then click on this little toggle once it loads. You'll be prompted again to allow the install and boom, you now have a dock. It hides by default when windows get near it and I'm running in a virtual machine so the mouse isn't triggering it to show itself, but you can see it is there when I move the windows around. As for multitasking, you have a few different options. You can swap windows like you'd expect, which is slightly easier now that we have a dock but you can also use Alt-Tab to swap windows quickly with your keyboard, and GNOME also has great support for virtual desktops or workspaces depending on the terminology that you're used to. These can be switched using Control, Alt, and left or right arrow keys, and by default are dynamically created as you open windows on a blank desktop. This makes context switching a lot easier. Say you have a desktop for work, another for general web browsing stuff and media consumption, and then a third for gaming. Really nice. To enable third-party repositories, we need to open the software app, then click on the hamburger icon in the upper right corner and select software repositories. In this new window, scroll down to the bottom where you'll see this Fedora third-party repositories section. Remember that button in the installer that enabled third-party repositories? If you had that checked, then you'd have all four of these repos here for PyCharm, Google Chrome, Nvidia drivers, and Steam enabled and I believe it also ticks this box up here to automatically enable new third-party repos. The main reason I leave that box in the installer unticked is because I don't really want all these things. I usually just need Steam and maybe the NVIDIA driver depending on my system. So let's enable both of those repos now and then head back over to software to install Steam. Close this window, go to the search on the top left of the software window, and then type in Steam. We want the first result, so let's install that. Once it's done, we can start Steam just like we normally would. On the topic of software, Flatpak is installed by default but only comes configured with Fedora's official Flatpak repo, which allows the Fedora project to more easily ship some closed source software. I like this move because combined with the previously mentioned third-party repositories, it kind of allows them to get around the licensing restrictions for their primary repos, but it still makes it easy to configure the OS for most use cases. But getting back to Flatpak, if you want, you can still enable the flathub.org Flatpak repo, and I can confirm that it shouldn't cause any issues since I've used them together myself before. One last thing that I would like to mention here is Fedora has this tool called DNF Dragora, which is a fantastically stupid name, but it is a graphical update manager, much like Linux Mint has their update manager tool. 
While I wouldn't say this is the best tool out there, since the UI is a little clunky and not the most intuitive, it is much better than nothing, and it allows people to use a GUI if they prefer to avoid the command line. So to wrap this all up, I'll just leave you all with my thoughts on Fedora. Personally, I haven't used Fedora much in my home. I had a few Fedora servers way, way back when, but those have since been migrated to Debian or nowadays some Alma Linux. And whenever I've tried Fedora in the past, I've always seemed to run into these like really weird niche issues like package conflicts with the Mate desktop and KDE crashing and resetting my entire environment per uh, periodically. But I've been using it on my laptops the last week or so, and I have to say that it's been pretty solid on both. Gaming on the System76 Gazelle with hybrid graphics and even with the high DPI display of the Galago Pro have been working really well for me. Thus, I'm thinking I might try and put it on my desktop soon to see if I can get it working well with both DaVinci Resolve and gaming. Who knows? This might be the Linux distro for me. I also think it's really cool that Red Hat essentially provide us a free operating system that more or less models future RHEL releases. Of course, they get the benefit of the community helping flesh out and provide feedback for new ideas and changes to the OS, but funding development for Linux and other commonly used software is rather huge, and it helps push forward free software as a whole. All right, that's all I have for this one, and now I'm curious to know what your guys' thoughts are on Fedora. Do you use it, or do you just hate it for some reason? And also, what desktop do you normally use with it? I personally use KDE. Let me know in the comments section below, and if you've got any other Linux distros you'd like me to take a look at in the future. If you didn't like the video, then you know what to do, but if you did like it, then go hit that like button and consider getting subscribed and hitting the bell icon so you don't miss future videos just like this one. I've also got a Discord server if you'd like to join the community and just chat and hang out with us, or if you need it, we can try and help you with any Linux issues you might have. I hope you all have a great day and I will catch you in the next one.